hello friends now in this video we are starting with uh, drugs which are targeting your gastrointestinal tract sorry so we have discussed general pharma complete we are in the way with antimicrobial drugs we have discussed about autocoids in detail so please you can watch all those video and if you have not subscribe my channel yet please subscribe us and support us okay and share with your friends also so let's start with the first group of drugs that is drugs which are used for peptic ulcer disease clear so starting with directly with the drug so here you can see the pathology behind that that food causes a stimulation of brain and through vagus nerve it causes increased style choline enzyme and that will act on m1 receptor histamine release is seen okay and there will be finally stimulation of parietal cells then there will be acid production so this is the basic pathology means uh, finally there will be increased acid production through all of this way through a style choline through this s2 receptor activation clear so we will target these sites to inhibit the increased acid production so first group drug is your m1 blocker m1 receptor blocker that is also anti muscarinic drug so it include two drugs that is pyangipine and telangipine cause it okay it causes decreased acid production by 40 to 60 percent so it will decrease uh, acid production by 40 to 60 percent and it only decreases your meal induced acid production but it is out of use now clear so two drugs pyrangipine telangipine which will act on this m1 receptor and by inhibiting these receptors this will decrease acid production by 40 to 60 percent but it is uh, not in use now clear now the second is your s2 blocker so it includes cimetidine Diamantidine, like these drugs, it will decrease acid production by 60 to 80 percent, and it will decrease both meal induced as well as nocturnal acid production. The next group of drug is proton pump inhibitors, such as omeprazole. It will decrease acid production by 80 to 99 percent, and it will decrease both meal induced as well as nocturnal acid production. Then, coming with the now, now we will discuss in detail about all of these drugs. Clear? So this was the basic. Now we are moving to the detail. So first coming to the proton pump inhibitors so what is the mechanism of action of this proton pump inhibitor so it will inhibit your hydrogen potassium pump that is also known as proton pump clear and this is basically irreversible inhibition of this pump clear this proton pump inhibitor causes irreversible inhibition of this pump and this uh, proton pump inhibitor are also heat and run drug heat and run category drug heat and run drug category means t half is short but action lasts for a longer time now what are the drug so you can remember like this dil ro pada okay dexabreprazole ilaprazole lansoprazole raviprazole omeprazole and pantoprazole so these are the drug which are coming under pipa you can remember two or three omeprazole pantoprazole raviprazole lansoprazole like this efficacy is same all the drugs are equally efficacious but when we we'll talk about potency this dexabreprazole this is the most potent and least potent is your pantoprazole this is build the least potent and potency decreases in this order clear now one more important point all are pro drug all are pro drug remember this all are pro drug clear an active molecule is your sulfenamide now coming to the efficacy so single dose of ppi causes maximum effect in first two hours and after a stoppage acid suppression remains inhibited for next two to five days because of this i am telling that these, these drugs are hit and run drug clear because it is causing irreversible inhibition so until unless new enzymes are not synthesized that is not going to increase your acid production clear so this is a diagram which is showing two hours then a stop then after two to five days it will again come to normal now what are the pharmacokinetics so it is given through oral route okay then raviprazole pantoprazole and ismoprazole it can be given through injection it must be given 30 minutes before meal this is very important this must be given 30 minutes before meal so it will inhibit maximum amount of H plus K plus ATPH in the stomach. This is very important clinical point. Now PPI are also acid level. So acid resistant or enteric coated tablets have been developed or it is also, it may be given in the form of capsule because of the acid liability. Getting a point? Okay. Now next point, S2 blockers. S2 blockers are also, S2 blockers are acid stable. Hence they are cheap in compared to when you will talk about PPI. So this is the advantage of a PPI. Because PPI is acid level, so we have to give in the, in the form of capsule or enteric coated. But S2 blockers are acid level, acid stable, sorry. So they can, they are given as it is, so they are cheaper. And this is the one advantage of S2 blockers over PPI. 
now all ppi are metabolized by your cyp 2c19 very important interaction i have discussed in general pharma the interaction of omeprazole okay with your i have discussed omeprazole interaction with clopidogrel and prasugrel like this drugs omeprazole is maximum cyp inhibitor i have discussed now general video then rabiprazole and pentobrazole this is least cyp inhibitor drugs now in pregnancy most unsafe is your omeprazole and safe all other ppi are safe and in when we'll talk about the drug of choice in case of pregnancy then it will be lansoprazole means lansoprazole is safest in pregnancy now what are the uses of ppi so ppi are the drug of choice for peptic ulcer whether it is nsa induced or h pylori induced or perforated peptic ulcer it will be the drug of choice for peptic ulcer it is also drug of choice for jollinger elson syndrome it is also drug of choice for GERD. Clear? We give PPI along with prokinetics. Then it is also drug of choice to prevent aspiration pneumonia due to stomach acid. It is given before and during surgery. And remember this PPI, PPI also coming under pre-anesthetic medication. Just name, please. Just name some pre-anesthetic medication in your in my comment box. Some pre anesthetic medication. What are the categories of pre anesthetic medication? Just you to I will discuss in my anesthetic anesthesia video, but just comment. So, these are the uses of PPI. Now, coming to the side effects of PPI. So, first, omeprazole. Omeprazole is enzyme inhibitor. Okay, it will cause gynecomastia, menstrual irregularity, impotency, and also it may lead to acute renal failure. But this side effect is extremely rare. This acute renal failure is extremely rare, but it may cause. Now, so these are the side effects which are specifically a story with omeprazole all ppi so chronic use will decrease hcl and if hcl is decreased then there will be decreased absorption of folate folic acid that will cause anemia there will decrease calcium osteoporosis there will decrease magnesium called hypermagnesium because acidity is necessary for absorption of folate calcium and magnesium clear there will increase chance of infection as well so no b12 deficiency no megaloblastic anemia clear then hyper gastinemia due to decrease Inhibition of feedback by HCL basically, then there will be increased dementia, increase infection. I have told increase infection because of the decreased acidity, uh, microbes will not be killed in your stomach. Yeah, so that may lead to a spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, clostridium difficult infection, community acquired pneumonia. Clear? So, this is about your PPI that is proton pump inhibitor drugs. Now, coming to the S2 blockers. So they are the competitive blocker of S2 receptor except thymotidine. This is non-competitive. So this is important MCQ question. All S2 blockers are competitive blocker, but one exception is there, thymotidine. This is non-competitive. Coming to the drugs. So first drug is cymotidine, then ranitidine, thymotidine, roxatidine, and nizatidine. So Rani is a girl, and some of, suppose he, she is famous. She becomes famous. Okay, so you can relate like this. Cymotidine is least potent, sorted acting, and CYP inhibitor. Okay, Simon, just go and watch general pharmacology video. These things are clear. This thing will get clear. CIP inhibitor like this. Cymotidine, least potent, shortest acting and CIP inhibitor. And some side effects are uniquely associated with cymotidine, such as gynecomastia and impotency, menstrual irregularity and galactoria. These are the side effects which are specific with cymotidine. These are side these side effects are absent. These side effects will be absent in other S2 blockers. You have seen similar to omeprazole, gynecomastia, impotency like this. Okay, so cymotidine side effects are gynecomastia, impotency, menstrual irregularity, and galactoria. In ranitidine, no such side effect are seen. This famotidine is most potent and most longest drug, and best oral viability is with nizatidine. Uses and side effects are same like PPI, and this is S2 blockers will be the drug of choice for stress ulcer. Remember this: S2 blockers are drug of choice for stress ulcers. Now, what are the other miscellaneous drugs which can be used to decrease HCL production? So, the first drug is your mesoprostol. It decreases HCL production by inducing EP3, okay, which is a GI type receptor which is present on parietal cell and it increases your mucus and bicarbonate. Dec See, HCL is dangerous, so it will decrease HCL production. Mucus and bicarbonate is helpful, protective, so it will increase mucus and bicarbonate production. So, mucus and bicarbonate production is increased by induction of EP2 and EP4 receptor, which is GS type of receptor. Clear? Yeah? And this mesoprostol is synthetic PGE1 analog. And receptor is EP receptor and its use is NSAID induced peptic ulcer. Now, next is your tenetoprazole. This is a reversible PPI. Remember this. This is the reversible PPI. All other PPI were irreversible. This tenetoprazole will be reversible PPI. Then, revaprazole and venoprazole. 
K plus site competitive blocker of proton pump. They are K plus site competitive blocker of proton pump. This Revapresin and Venoprazin. Advantage, they are not metabolized by CRP2C19. Hence, used by Japanese people because their CRP2C19 is not very active. So, in them, PPI are not used. Clear? Okay. Now, what are the side effects with mesoprestol? So, diarrhea will be common, most common in cramps or abnormal pain may also occur. This mesoprestol is contraindicated in pregnancy. Remember this. Mesoprestol is absolutely contraindicated in pregnancy. Okay. Then we can also give antacid, which will give pain relief. Okay. Basically, they are acid neutralizer. They are basic drug, which will bind to HCL and neutralize that. Use these are the other faster acting drug, so it will it will give your relief from pain. Getting your point, and this is drug of choice in pregnancy or ch in case of children because in pregnancy and children we usually not give PPI or H2 blocker. Getting your point, coming to this antacid, so first is your systemic antacid, so high absorption in blood, and uh, the first is your sodium salts such as sodium bicarbonate or sodium citrate, so they are the systemic antacid. And one side effect with sodium bicarbonate that it will cause distension of stomach because of the CO2 production and it will also cause perforation of ulcer due to the CO2 production because sodium bicarbonate SCO3 is there it is degraded to form CO2 and this CO2 will cause distension of stomach and perforation of ulcer but sodium citrate there will be no CO2 production so there will be no distension of stomach and perforation of ulcer clear side effects hypertension edema because sodium salts are there and that will also worsen your heart failure then second is your calcium salt calcium carbonate and calcium bicarbonate they are the drug of choice in renal failure Clear? Drug of choice for renal failure are calcium salts. Side effect, constipation and milk alkali syndrome when given along with the milk. Means they will cause hypercalcemia, metabolic acidosis and renal stone formation. Clear? Now coming to the non-systemic antacid which are less absorbed in blood. So it will consist of two, magnesium or aluminium. So magnesium, in magnesium, magnesium hydroxide will be there, magnesium trisilicate will be there and when we talk about aluminium compound then aluminium hydroxide will be there. And these, their action are fast, they will be slow they have slow action but sustained action clear and their side effects are basically magnesium so magnesium compounds have a side effect it is diarrhea and aluminium hydroxide is a side effect that is constipation and because of this we mix these two aluminium and magnesium okay and combine together clear okay and that is known as megaldrate that is magnesium aluminium hydroxide getting a point okay and this is combined to this counter out this side effect diarrhea and constipation to also increase T half second benefit C, uh, third benefit is to normalize the gastric emptying okay gastric emptying is also normalized by combining this drug two drugs now the side effect of magnesium compounds osteoporosis and aluminium compounds are this hypospadiumia osteoporosis encephalopathy and both are contraindicated in renal failure remember this both are contraindicated in your renal failure clear so these are the two group of drugs in ulcer protective we will discuss in next video so we have discussed about ppi s2 blockers antacid like these drugs okay so 